If you're wanting to save some gas in your vehicle, I've got five ways you can try to save a little extra fuel without actually having to do much of anything. All right, let's get at it. All right, so the first thing you might want to try doing is uh, cleaning all the junk out of the trunk. Um, also, cleaning all the unnecessary stuff out of the interior of the vehicle. You see I've got a bunch of stuff just tossed in there. I've used this as my work vehicle, so that's why it's kind of got a lot of junk in there. Uh, but definitely want to go and uh, take the junk out of the trunk. Also, if you don't mind like sound dampening and stuff, um, while you're in here cleaning all this junk out, you can even take this floor. I took a, my floor mat out because it had a big piece of cardboard and, or actually a board and everything in there. And when I actually took it out, it probably weighed about four pounds. So that's just saving you a little bit. I mean, if you got crazy, I could go in here. I could take off all these side panels and everything. You know, probably all that out of there would probably save you, you know, maybe about six or seven pounds worth, even stuff up on here. Um, you know, you, you probably won't really notice that that much, but over the whole car, if you start doing little bits like that, it would actually help just a little bit. So that would be number one, is just clean your car out. All right, the next thing you can do is gauge up all your tires. That's one of the main things that you can really do to start saving a lot of fuel. Um, the rolling resistance matters a lot. So even if you're getting your car serviced, like at a oil shop or... Uh, Walmart or you know whatever place you're going to to get your tires redone um, you probably want to go ahead and check them anyways because a lot of places just fill them up to 35 PSI and that's it they won't go any higher or any lower so uh, if you look here on the side wall you can see right here max pressure is 51 PSI so your tire can handle up to 51 you can even handle over that but that's the max running PSI um, I usually put it somewhere between 5 to 10 less than that, so I usually run mine somewhere around 40 to 45. Usually I run 45 in the front and 40 in the rear just because the engines up front is going to be pressing harder down on these tires, so it's going to squat them more on the front than the back. So putting a little extra air is just going to raise it up a little bit more and look exactly like the rear, so it has less rolling resistance, less contact really less contact with the ground is what you're going for um, it's better to have more contact if you want to stop so just remember if you do that if you over inflate your tires a little bit it will help but it will cut down your stopping distance so just give yourself a little extra room for that but I'm just saying just go up to what they recommend on your tire at least a little bit under that so probably about five pounds under would be great oh and also if you're getting them um, uh, new tires, uh, there are some fuel efficient tires. This one is a snow tire, so it's not that fuel efficient. But you can get fuel efficient tires now um, with like straight tread and stuff, and it'll actually help save fuel that way as well. It just it increases or decreases the rolling resistance. All right, the next thing is make sure that your vehicle is actually tuned up. So either new spark plugs or new coil packs. Um, you know whatever that takes to get your car tuned up new spark plugs is a must um, just the kind of reference usually in between 50 to 75,000 you should go ahead and replace them um, they can go up to 120,000 but after like 75,000 they start you know wearing out or you have a more likelihood of it wearing out um, if you're capable you could put on a high flow air intake um, if you're capable of doing that kind of stuff, uh, they have universal ones like this one I've got on mine. I believe it's a two inch to a two and a half inch, and it's got a coupler in between those. Um, I I think I paid about thirty dollars or something for this. It could be higher, it could be lower, but somewhere around like thirty to forty dollars is probably what this costs. Um, and it's nice. They say on there on the packaging that it will increase um, airflow, which it can, uh, depending on. Um, your OME or your factory box some of them are restrictive but uh, don't really count on the high flow stuff the main reason that I get these and I put them on most of my vehicles that I have is not really because it's extremely high flowing which it could be depending on your box like I said but I can actually see 
my air intake, my air filter, and I can even turn it and check to make sure that it's clean. Uh, the other ones are in a box. Um, you can get the fancy ones like of this uh, somewhere between probably 50 to uh, 120 and up really, but the cheaper ones are somewhere between 80 um, to 130 or 40 dollars, let's say. And that will actually have a heat shield around it and let air flow into it and go into your intake. But uh, I've tried both ways and they don't really seem to matter that much as long as you have it in a part of the engine compartment kind of farther away from the engine and out of the direct range of the radiator. So if I, I've got mine kind of sitting off the side kind of behind the battery a little bit and I've got the air that flows up through here that actually came into the uh, factory air box. So that's why I have it pointed over the side and down just a little bit to catch the air coming in from underneath the battery box there. But yeah, if you're able to do this, it would be a good thing just so you can see if your air filter does get dirty or not. You can go ahead and one way this also saves you money is because you could take these off and wash them in like a five gallon bucket uh, with some uh, washing detergent and basically just take shake it around and then you just let it sit out in the sun dry and you're ready to put it back on these are really almost lifetime filters um, the one that I had on my car before this one it was set up it was just a cone filter that was just connected to my factory pipe and I think I had it on there for like seven or eight years and when I took it off, the only reason I took it off was I got this whole setup, so I could really still used it, but this one came with a brand new filter. So I was like, hey, what the heck, I'll just go ahead and put it all on at one time, and it make it look all nice and matching and everything. So, um, yeah, I'll have some links and stuff for a few of these universal ones if you want to try it and see. Uh, they're so cheap that really you could probably get it. If it doesn't really help your vehicle any, you could either go ahead and sell it to a friend or you could just keep it around if you want to keep switching it on and off and just see if it actually did help or not, depending on the driving. Um, you know, sometimes if you're driving stop and go traffic, this will probably not help that much. You know, it won't be any different really. If you're going on the highway at high speed, this might actually help some because it will allow you to suck in more air faster, you know, at faster speeds. All right, so. Just remember to uh, change out your spark plugs and coils and spark plug wires if you have those still. This one's kind of an older one so you can see I've still got uh, spark plug wires. But I would recommend this just to see if your vehicle ran any better on that. I left it on because I didn't really tell much of a difference. This thing gets anywhere from about 28 to 32 on the highway. Um, so off the highway it gets anywhere from like 20. I think it was like 26 to 28, depending on how you're driving. And like I said earlier about losing weight on the vehicle, here's something I probably will go ahead. It's this uh, engine hood heat shield, and it's been collapsed down like that for a long time. So I've been thinking about just taking it off. That thing is pretty thick, um, so it would probably be you know, about three or four pounds by itself. Because it's just, I mean, it's that thick. It's a big insulation piece, and really my hood and everything's all peeling and everything anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much anymore. Uh, next thing you can do if you want to get crazy about, you know, trying to save some fuel is you could go around with some sort of tape, just try to get something that would come off the vehicle easily, and you could tape up all these gaps, at least on the front end, um, you know, like all around your headlight, down around the bottom, the grill, across this hood here even down like these really aren't for anything except for decoration I did put some pipes from the front here and ran it back up in front of my um, air filter my aftermarket air filter so it bring just a little bit of fresh air cooler air up into the engine compartment and it might have helped a little bit and you can see on this side I just put this big metal plate sticker plate right beside the kitty cat um, it basically closed off that whole area right there so it's more aerodynamic. It just basically, you know, shows the air around instead of it getting pushed back. Because really, they, the original ones had this slotted thing, but right behind it was just flat. So really all that wind was just going back in there and sitting and just catching air instead of just letting it flow around the side of the car. 
So that's why I put this one here, cut these holes to try to let the air go up in. And the other side I couldn't do anything with, so I just went ahead and filled it in with that flat sheet of metal uh, with two-sided tape. So that you could do um, any big areas. You could go ahead and just seal off. What you want to do is just make it cut through the air easier. The more air you can get to flow around it, the better. Um, and if you're also willing to do that, then what you'll want, which I don't really have, you can see I put some new struts on the front of my car, which raised the front end probably about another inch or so or inch and a half higher than the rear. So really mine's got an upward front end angle on my car. It's actually a little bit higher here in the front than it is the rear. You actually would want that opposite. You would want it lower on the front and higher in the rear to get that uh, effect of pressure going in and then opening up underneath the car and making the air actually flow underneath the car a little bit faster, which will increase it. Right now, if it's, you know, pinched at the back and open on the front, it's actually catching air underneath it and not letting it flow out as easy. So here's everything that came out of my trunk. Pretty good load, probably about another 10 or 15 pounds, especially this. This is probably about 7 or 8 pounds by itself because it's completely full of antifreeze um, and the grinder and all that kind of stuff. So actually probably about 20-something pounds with this stuff just out of the back and uh, if you're cleaning it out really thoroughly like mine um, don't take out your um, tire iron this one this cross iron um, was just extra just to speed up changing the tires but I still got mine in my little compartment over there my small one that actually came with the car and uh, it still does the job so I really don't need the big one so that's what your trunk should look like um, and you can remove your thing that's just extra like two or three pounds worth depending on what kind of you know throw you got in there and i still got my jumper cables and stuff just try to keep some emergency equipment in there in case you do break down the side of the road all right last but not least is fuel additives um there's quite a few out there uh you can get any cheap ones really kind of still do but um most of the best, okay, the best ones that I've actually found to work is Seafoam Additive. That's like the top. Um, also, Marvel Mystery Oil and Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Um, I would recommend all three of those. They do a really good job at what they say they're supposed to. Um, now, I also will have links down here if you want to buy a whole bunch, just so you'll have it for a while. But... Uh, any, you know, even the cheap ones from Walmart, possibly Dollar Tree, I wouldn't trust it completely, but I have ran it through this, and it's never actually caused it to run uh, weirdly or anything, so I can't see anything wrong with it. Um, you can also put 90% um, alcohol in here, and it will make it run a little bit better, especially right now, they'll probably start watering the fuel down a little bit, so if you put like 90 something percent alcohol in here, it would probably make your fuel run a little bit better, especially um, I heard a lot of Volkswagens and BMWs and stuff are very fuel sensitive. So if you put in a cheap fuel and it did start running rough um, or wouldn't even want to run at all, you could try putting some 90% alcohol in there and just slosh the car around for a little bit, try to mix it up as good as you can, and then crank it for a while and see if it would start running again. But um, ninety percent alcohol really won't hurt anything in the fuel system. It's just you know makes it burn a little bit hotter. So yeah, um, fuel treatments are a good way as well to just keep your fuel and your engine uh, injectors and the top end of the pistons and the cylinder head kind of clean of all gunk and junk just to keep it uh, running smoothly. So fuel additives would be one of the top things that you can do right off the bat just to start helping fuel mileage. Alright, hope this helped. Please give me one of these and uh, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel uh, so you don't miss future videos like this. I've also got a bunch of uh, tool videos under my channel if you want to go see that. Hey, there's a cat. Hey, kitty. <laughs> Alright, well thanks for watching and I'll have a good one.